I'm it's been a while. We got a, we got a lot to cover. We're going to snap to do what we do. We got an hour, so it, but to go quick. Having the, one of the top, I mean, expert barbers, number one, but also um, a videographer, right? Photographer. You know, you got hey, oh, oh, makeup. I, I consider myself a professional slasher. A professional slasher. Don't tell me what that is now. Because yeah. let's start the show. It's time for the hottest podcast in the nation. The Guts Combo and Coffee Podcast, hosted by best-selling author and entrepreneur, Derek D. Reed. Get ready for insight, laughs, and conversation. It's about to be lit. Powered by I Can Rock Entertainment. Let's get it. It's that number one worldwide podcast. Worldwide. It's going down in, in five, five, four, four three, three, two, two one. one. It's up. What was that? An exhibition? We need emotional content. Try again. Shout out to my man behind the cam. Hair can have amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, Tell my teams in the building. Push the subscribe button and everybody know that you are watching the number one barbershop podcast, Cuts, Combo, and Coffee. Winners are not allowed to allow losers to rewrite history. One, two, one, two, one, two. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. One, two, one, two, one, two. It's the boy, Top Shelf D. Reed, man. Welcome to another episode of Cuts, Convo, and Coffee, man. I'm in the building, man. Listen, if you're tuned in right now to Cuts, Convo, and Coffee, we got a special show for y'all on YouTube today. Push that subscribe button. Right there it is. Right there. Right there. Push that subscribe button. Let everybody know that you're watching the number one barber podcast in the world. I used to say the nation half cam in the world. You know what I mean? But listen, while I'm mentioning half cam, the man behind the cam himself, half cam, half amazing, Mr. Tim Fontaine is in the building, man. What's up, Tim Fontaine? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Listen, man. Well, I'm, I'm gonna try to uh, slow. I'm gonna slow grind this thing today because we got a special guest today, and I cannot wait, man, till we get to the point where we got to introduce this man. He's the slasher, professional slasher. You know, when you call yourself a slasher, that means you do so many things. And it's just it, you do so many things that we don't know what to say. Look, call him a slasher. You know, wherever you need him at, he's gonna be there. Whatever you you know you need him to do, he's gonna do it to his fullest potential. Professional. You know what I mean? And you know what? You can even have X Rise name. You know what I mean? Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, my man, Kenny KD Duncan, is in the building. What's up, KD? Man, it's a pleasure to be here, man. man it's thank, a pleasure to Thank have you for welcoming me into your, your second home. Oh, my God, my second home. That's right. <laughs> I, done, I done pulled our craft out of it into something else. Man, how you doing, my brother, I'm man? I'm feeling incredible, bro. Oh, my I'm God. I'm incredible. Man, you look incredible, man. You still look good, man. Likewise. Goodness gracious, Mindset man. Mindset mean everything, man. Mindset mean everything, man. Man, thank you for coming on the show, man, to bust it up, man. I was just um, saying, even before we got on the camera, that I didn't want to just have any, I never want to just have anyone on a Cuts Convo on Coffee. Mm -hmm. I want to have someone that's meaningful, someone that I consider, honestly, Katie, the GOAT. You know what I mean? I call you the GOAT. I, I don't know if you know that. that. You I know what I mean? That. And, um, man, just all the stuff that you have done. Um, for our business, for like you do stuff for several businesses, though. We get into that too. Um, but this, all the stuff that you have done, I haven't watched you over the years. We met years ago, man. So, um, but I just want to give you your flowers. You know what I mean? I think Much you know, I want to give you your flowers, bro. Because you deserve it. Thank you. you deserve it. You do a lot. Um, and we was laughing a little bit. Uh, if, if for y'all don't know, me and Kenny has, um, we go way back. We go back a it's little bit. It's funny. It's cool. How go close. Back. But yet far. So let me start it <laughs> off. So so me and, me and uh, KD is from the barber world, right? You know what I mean? Barber, professionalism, cutting hair, salon, stuff like that. Kenny's actually, I'm going to read his bio, and I'm telling you, man, the bio is so impressive. I might even break it down, you know what I mean? Um, but we met at a hair show. You know what I mean? Yep. And um, I really believe Browner yeah, Brothers. It was Browner Brothers Hair Show years ago. You know, probably over 10 years, probably about 10 years ago. So no, we met uh, there. It may have been long. Could have been longer. He said, could have been? Could have been longer than that, right? I think it might have been longer. Anyway, could anyway, anyway, so we clicked. I'm going to let you go ahead and tell other. <laughs> and we clicked from the gate and, um, you know, up and coming, growing in this professional um, business. And I think you was even just start with Andis or you was agree start with Andis. What did you, was you with Andis then? No, I was, I was already with them. You was, was already with yeah. was So you was already uh, with An, um, Andis. It depends on what year we met, but. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we became cool, learned the ropes about the business, and Kenny walked around the floor, you know what I mean, and doing his uh, showcase and stuff like that. Uh, and we became cool, but I noticed that you had a cape, the Andes cape. Everybody wanted the Andes cape, right? Back in the day, I think everybody wanted that Andes cape, and I was one of them that wanted it. So me and Kenny, you know, met in Atlanta, so I assume Kenny lived in Atlanta, or from Atlanta. <laughs> In return, and Kenny, I assume he was from Atlanta as well. So for Atlanta, <laughs> now mind you, we've been cool for a couple years until one time I end up calling Kenny and I said, "Hell, don't forget." Or I text, I probably called you and said, "Yo, don't forget the cape." 
I said, I, need, I want to still get that cape from it. Because I had, now I went back home up north. I done went all the way back home where I live and from Wilmington, Delaware. So I had went back up north. I went home. So um, what happened, Kitty? So I called you actually for the cape. And you asked me, I, you said, well, how can I get the cape? I said, how can I get the cape? That's what happened. And you said, um, well, yeah, well, you can actually get it from me. I'm right in. Where was you at at the time? I was in Delaware. You was in Delaware. <laughs> I said, hold up. What do you mean you in Delaware? I thought KD had a show or something. Maybe he's up in Delaware. He said, no. Exact words. No, I live in Delaware. So who knew? You know what I mean? Kitty lived in Delaware. I could throw probably. a rock through his backyard. Yeah. <laughs> like right in back of me? Like. I could throw a rock through his backyard. So, so KD lived in back of me. And I think you sent me the address, man. I remember I, I, and I said, man, get out of here. So all this time, me and KD, when we met, we thought that we lived in Atlanta. And we both lived in Delaware. So, you know, three years later. You're talking about three years later. Yeah. But and it was funny because prior to that one is when I found out where, where you were at. But I didn't know. I, just, I found out proximity, but I didn't know where because I didn't right. ask. Right. But uh, the first time I knew that you were closer, I didn't know we was neighbors yet. The first time I knew we was closer right. was Warm Daddies. Yes. I see him at Warm Daddies, and I'm like, you're from the A. What are you doing here? up here. And he's like, yo, I'm from up here. I'm like, exactly. What? Nah, never knew that. It's crazy. Right. Never knew that. And um, and then he said, man, <laughs> gave me the address so we could get the cape. You're talking about five minutes. Like, like, <laughs> Kenny lives in back of me, right? Lived in back of me at the time. And I pull up, and you was um, y'all had, had a swimming pool. You know, I remember you had a swimming pool because he was came outside. Like, man, we out back swimming with the kids or something. So your kids had been small then. And um, he actually brought me to um, Andy's cape, man. And we was like laughing so much. Like, all this time we didn't know we was neighbors. It was crazy because we've clicked. And here's what I believe. I believe that people who are dedicated to their craft. And no matter what the craft is, yeah. we migrate to one another. We, 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 we have kindred spirits based off of that, that, that energy and passion that you have Ooh. behind what you do. Yes. You click. That's what happened with us. Yeah, I like that. It was man. like I seen myself in him, and he seen himself in me. So it was like we click. We but click. we just never asked, where you from? Where you from? <laughs> and we just assumed. And, and, you know, we got that vibe. Oh, you from where, the A, right? You, you got to be. You got to be from the A. You got the vibe. And, and we said the same thing about each other. Oh, you you from the A. And you know what? We was going down so much. So we was in the A so much, man. Mm-hmm. And um, and we just assumed that we both was from the A. Yeah. Meanwhile, we both live in, not from Delaware, but we live in yeah. Delaware, right? So, I think that one of the things for me, for me, my assumption that you are from there is because of this thing that Philly lacked. And it was Southern hospitality. Yes. So because we had clicked, my assumption, I'm like, he can't be from up north. Right. Right. That's how I go. <laughs> yeah, you can't, know, it has to can't be. That. And that, that was what it was. It was like the energy, the vibe, the response. So I had been reprogrammed right. to assimilate to what Southern barbers use for their success. Yes. It was their personality, ability to communi- communicate and, you know, be an asset to other people. Yes. I seen that in you. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. This man. ain't Philly. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and listen, we hungry. We yeah, young yeah. and we hungry. So, and, 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 and segue to that, do you feel that that still exists, that hunger that, you know, we was young trying to be, like you say, I remember you, like, I'm going to get on that stage. Mm-hmm. Not only I'm going to get on that stage, I'm going to be the main dude on the stage. And you accomplished that. Mindset over so everything. I think, I think that um, anything that I've done and for the people around me who are dedicated to their craft, the consistent thing is the ability to fight through hard times. Yes. Irregardless of what they're going through, to still stay get, have habits that will put them in line with accomplishing their goals. Yes. I agree. I agree, man. That's real good. I really agree. And, you know, I think that's a missing, it's like a spiritual piece, something that's something the inside. Definitely you know what I mean? so. It's, yeah, it's something from the inside that you have to have. And a lot of our young people, I be trying to get them to have that. But if we got so many different generations now. They they think a little bit different. Everything is quick and fast and no hard work, no dedication, no commitment. It's like we had to have that. You know what I mean? So, yeah. We didn't have we didn't have as many images put in front of us that showed just the end result. Yes. Social media tailors the image as if there's no process. Yes. Yeah, they send a finished product. They send a finished <sighs> product. I got it. Yes. <laughs> like, <sighs> I got it. And yeah. like, I just woke up. Now I got it. No. Yeah. There's a process. I watched a video yesterday yeah. that talked about uh, how trees go in two directions at the same I time. I saw it. Right? You I know saw exactly that. I seen a video right? like that. I didn't so, know that. So the thing that hit me the most was you talk about how the roots have to go deep first yep. in order for the branches and the leaves end up growing. Correct. Yes. Too, right? The darkness 
and the pressure that the roots go under right. are harder for the roots to grow than it is for the branches and the leaves to grow because there's wow. no resistance. Right. People want all the resist the, all the yes. resistance free, you know, experiences of the tree being tall and being beautiful. Yes. Without the actual work prior to you right. follow me. I, I totally agree. We were accustomed to the work. Yes. Grounded. I, I, honestly, to a degree, um, I've enjoyed the dirty work because it was more rewarding than just the praise that I got. And let me share with you yep. why even to this day I'm still cutting hair. And it's, financially, I don't have to. Right. But it's a situation of I desire to. Yes. Um, I know that feeling, yes. And um, it was something I shared most recently that I wasn't able to language about the early part of my career is I, I believe I've been paid more in character than I have in cash throughout mm. my career mm. because of me being able to have my gift bring me before great men yes. that end up being a mirror to what my flaws were that yeah. I wasn't able to have developed at home because of the dysfunction that existed. Yes. But the greatness that lied within the individuals I had access to end up giving me inspiration for the hard work. Yes. You follow me? Yes. Like when you see athletes practicing. Right. When you see artists rehearsing. Correct. <laughs> yeah. It's like what you what you see is you gotta do these things in order to accomplish that. Right. Social doesn't show you that. Don't show you that. It doesn't, <laughs> like you said, and it go back to what you said, it doesn't show you the process of this thing. Don't show you the and, process. And that's one aspect. The other aspect that I have a problem with is that they show rewards for negative and bad behavior. We see that a lot of that mm. on, on, on social media. Like, mm. you can see something and say, well, why wouldn't I want a Bentley? She got a Bentley. He got a Bentley. And they doing X, Y, and Z. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, uh, and I was like, uh, yeah, but it don't go like that. But it's still, even in that, they showing that outcome of bad behavior, whatever, but they still got a process. They still, like, okay, for rappers or, or singers, they in the studio. They in the studio really, they in the studio, like, late at night. You know what I mean? Where, you know, you don't get to see all the, the hours that they put in. You don't, they, they ain't got time to go to every party. I got a thought. Um, my thought is a collection of um, ideas that I've gotten from the people that I've been able to be around. I've right. worked with some of the greatest athletes, and, and we, and actors, and, we, and, we and artists. Read, you don't mind we read the Bible when we get to it. I mean, <laughs> it may not be necessary, but, <laughs> but I got a chance to work with the yeah. top out of all three of those industries, athletes, artists, and, and, uh, at, uh, and actors. Right. I don't admire the lifestyle that they live. Okay. A large amount of what I believe is we've been rich in relationships through cutting hair. Right. And a lot of things people do with the resources that they gain is to give them access to the better versions of the relationships that we got just through cutting hair. Yes. So the Bentley is purchased to get access to that relationship from the young lady. Yes. It's so always for a reason, right? It's always for a always reason. Always for that reason, yeah. Like, the difference between, you know, one luxury car versus a, a, a souped-up normal car right. is the response that somebody's going to give you. hundred, yes. The access to a different level of relationship. Mm -hmm. What it's going to produce for you. That's that's literally what it comes down yes. to. Because most people are not saying, I purchased this car because it's a better investment because it's going right. to make me more money because I could actually rent it and do this and a third. Most of them don't do that. Right. It's giving you access to a better quality relationship. So if I have a low self-esteem, I need all these resources to give me access to additional validation through these things. Yes. But if I have a high self-esteem, eh, I'm not necessarily geared to want to do those things as much. You feel what I'm exactly. saying? Exactly. Lack of trust. Yep. Most of them have dogs. And the reason why they have dogs is because those are the, one of the types of relationships that aren't dependent upon how great you are at said thing that you now, do. So you're talking about dog, not dog, D-A-W-G. You're talking about a real... I'm talking about a real dog. A companion. Yes. Right, right. That relationship... I just want to be clear. You know, it cuts a cup of coffee. You know, it's barbershop talk to you. No, right that's, that's right. what I'm saying. So that the, the amount of people that are affluent, that I'm around, that have dogs, is primarily because they lack quality relationships that we are rich in. Wow. I never looked at it that way. <laughs> I'm just now, are you a dog owner at all, though? Not at all. Me, I, I'm, I'm not a big dog. I'm not saying I'm not a dog lover. I'm, 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 I'm they, not they against mud, anybody. Know? I'm not saying anything Correct. negative about anybody with a dog. But what I'm saying is individuals that are praised at the highest uh, ah. highest stage in life. Yes, I see the coalition. Typ typically have dogs because they're not rich in quality relationships because they don't trust right. as much people. So, with, And they need to feel that. 
So <laughs> we are rich in relationships. Yes, yes. If anything comes up, mm. you know somebody that does said thing. Yep. That's willing to give you a discount because of their relationship with you. Correct. Or let you in somewhere or give you access to somewhere because of the relationship. That's not what exists. Right. They get that from their dog. Wow. And that's something that, you know, throughout your journey of meeting even high level people and all that stuff. I'm just telling you, I'm I'm at, I'm, at, I'm at the tables. I know. I'm in the rooms. I'm not, I know. <laughs> no, 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 so, I'm so, hearing the frustrations. I'm hearing it all. So getting to that, Kenny, because like, um, it's something we talked about behind, um, you know, behind the camera about, you know, not putting us in a, a category of just a barber. You know what I mean? You're, you was always more than a professional barber. You know what I mean? Um, I remember you doing photography. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I remember you even stressed that out, even doing makeup for artists and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And, and, and how do you balance all those? I mean, a lot of people don't know that um, that you don't want to just have it in one category where he's just a barber. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Because you got so many uh, valuable access to different people, you know what I mean? Or different things to do. How do you balance those different things of, you know, all the things that you do? I get that all the time. How do you do so much? What What, what is your reason? Why how? You asked a lot of questions, but I'm I'm, yeah. I'm gonna take you through the journey. Uh, first, the mindset of why, and then the capability of how. I'm gonna okay. Walk you through that one. Okay. The, so good. The 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 why is, you want to be prepared without an opportunity, so that you you don't have an opportunity to not be prepared. Right. That's that's number one. Right. Number two is that I have the mentality that things are not a race; it's a marathon. I agree. So I don't have to do any of this stuff overnight. See, I'm, that's not, I'm not become, looking to become a master at anything overnight. Correct. The book Our Liars talk about how we had to have 10,000 hours of practice to become a master. That's right. That's, that's young people. Years. I need young people to go ahead and listen to this. That's actually a good nugget. You know what I mean? That's very important. And, and, and look how the longevity, look how I have given you longevity, but go ahead. And the, and the funny thing is, I don't see myself going anywhere. Good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> like, good stuff. Like, yeah. Like Brian said he feels like he's on the downside of his career. I don't. Right. Right. Problem? Like, I, I never felt that way either. You know, me being a barber. How long you been? Uh, well, let's just start with barbering. For how long you been a professional barber? Since December of '98. So what's, how many years is that, y'all? What's that half can? I don't, I'm like math. My math ain't math. I said like, a year because some people are like, man, I wasn't born in. In '98. Wow. <laughs> that's some. So it's a little time. So well over 20 years. You know what I mean? So that's that's 20 years ago. You know, and, and you're still carrying that same thing to all the other stuff you do you know what i mean the process mm -hmm. and, and and having in your mindset that d this is not a quick race this is a marathon but go ahead continue so just yesterday um one of the one of the coaches from the sixers he said to me he says i'm hell of impressed how you can groom some of the caucasians at a high level of mm. professionalism and skill set and then turn around and cut us talking about black people yeah the, the, at a high level the way you do that's right. And I broke it down. So I said, when players first get into the NBA, they get there based off of them having a certain skill set that allows for them to get access to the NBA. But they still have coaches that equip them with additional moves that's going to help them get through tough situations right. to help unlock them getting through those tough times, such as you get to the finals, you didn't have enough, and you, you didn't have enough tools in your tool belt to get you through right. when they hit you with that, that solid double team. Coaches know what to do to slow you down in a half court set. So coach's job is to actually say, hey, you're missing this. Right. We're going to work on this to add to what you're doing Correct. so that you could actually make it through, right? Right. The same thing with anything we do in life. Right. You're going to find that there's something that you're going to need to have done or a skill set that you're going to need to develop in order for you to become successful at said thing. That's the same thing that's going to happen with I what totally you're doing agree. now. I totally agree. You, started, you, you were a barber. You weren't. Right. A, yeah, a host of a show, and all, and you know, what, and all the other stuff. I did, and to be honest, it's something you touched on that I love cutting hair. You mm -hmm. know, what I mean, I love it so much as a career. I never wanted to feel like a job. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean, I never wanted to come into the barber shop and feel like, or in my shop and feel like it's a job, or I got to No, I, I, I didn't. I didn't want that. The moment I felt like that, I knew I would feel like I would walk away from the game. Mm -hmm. Now, me, I, you know, it's really technically could never walk away from the game once you establish and to a level that where we're at. You know, what I mean, we're. I was doing 100 years a week at one time. You know what I mean? It was un un unreal. Um, but I never I never got that feeling where I felt like a job. So with me, with so much on my plate, you know, with other companies, 
I just felt like I needed more time. Mm-hmm. And, and it's hard to be, uh, uh, pro- and then you know this, you know, it's hard to be, uh, for instance, you can't cut all day, every day. Mm. You can't do it right now. As much as, even if you wanted to, you really can't do it, you know, because you got too, too many, many other things going on. got too many other things going on. So you just had, but you still love the craft. You still cut. Do you still, how, how often do you cut now? So the question is how often do I cut in one state? In one that's, state? That's, that's the real question. Right. So I'm not in a space where I'm doing 100 heads a week anymore. Right. And I like that you said that because you know that that's nothing. That's 25 heads a day. Yeah. For four days. So We're good. If, if I'm in town, I will be in my shop Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Right. That's if I'm in town. If I'm not, if the NBA season is off, then there's a higher chance that I will be there all three days. Wow. But if the NBA season is on, there's a 50% chance I'll just be there two of those three days. Wow. But which ones will depend on the NBA schedule. Wow. But then also, I work with other teams too. So there's times I had to fly to different states. And that will cause me to miss one of those three days as well. All so right. the question is. All right. I got you. Wow. <laughs> well, go ahead. How, how often am I behind the chair in my barbershop? And that's the, that's the main question, it's, right? It's not the majority of my week. Wow. All right. Well, we'll hold that thought right quick. Listen, if you're just tuning in to Cuts Convo and Coffee, it is uh, 40 after hour right now. Um, My boy KD is, is spitting some gems already, man. And we didn't even get to the nitty gritty of all the things I want to talk about. Um, But you already know how we met. You know what I mean? We're started at. We're going to open up one of these hats. At least two of your hats right now. I think photography so far and cutting. But we also got to pay some bills. So have can. If you are ready, man, it's time for the hots. So, KD. The hots. The hots is where I touch on different subjects and stuff like that. You can chime in and stuff that um, people talk about on social media, national, international. Ooh. You know what I mean? And I might throw something out there. So I'm going to put an easy one out there first. And, and, and we'll talk about it together. And we'll spend a couple minutes on it. And that's it. So first thing, topic, uh, the solar eclipse happened this week. Man. So, you know, everybody's going crazy about the solar eclipse. I'm sure, sure that y'all saw it, um, the eclipse and it happened at 2 o'clock or something. It was east, It was a couple of places. So mm-hmm. some people didn't get a t- chance to experience it. So what are your thoughts? Because I'm hearing a lot of stuff. You got religion people comment on there. I mean, even some people say the world's going to be over. Uh, energy's going to change. People going to do this. I, I didn't hear a lot of positive stuff other than people wanting to see it. But how you feel about that solar eclipse? And I'll tell you how I feel too, but go ahead. So I, I'm not deeply connected to it to make it spiritual or uh, any, any of those things. I'm glad you said that. Um, I seen some good artwork that came from it. Did you? Who, who, <laughs> like artwork I mean, for us? I mean, like, as somebody who likes framing of video, there were some people that did a better job of capturing the eclipse than others. Did you see it? I was in the house. <laughs> Short answer. <laughs> well, go ahead. You're in the house. I'm just <laughs> I was in the house, and I was probably, like, playing a video game or something. <laughs> oh, my God. But <laughs> did you miss it? Like, or do you look, oh, shit, it's 3 o'clock. Did you, how did you Um Did you miss it? So I'm going to tell you exactly what I was doing. Uh, prior prior to playing the video games, uh, one of my hobbies is uh, that the really fast electric or remote control cars. Yes. Like, I have a problem. I have 19 of them. And oh, so you're in RC cars? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Me that's, too. That, yeah, that's, that's, oh, we got to talk. We got to yeah, talk. Yeah, yeah. Damn, I, so, we always have something in common. But <laughs> goodness gracious. So I have this car. It's called the Traxxas XRT. And okay. it, I broke it. <sighs> so prior to the Eclipse, I was out and the car broke. Yeah, yeah, so that's, that's more I got important. Changed, I got changed the steer, steering servo. But then I realized that I didn't want to go to the store because it was in Cinemas in New Jersey right. to actually get the part to fix it. Yet. Okay. So later I was like, ah. Let me just play the game real quick because I was going to do a bike ride. Right. But Well, I ended up doing a bike ride later. So I was going to do a bike ride, but I was like, ah, the eclipse is about to happen. It's going to get dark. So any significance, <laughs> anything you feel like, hey, it's a significance in it. You're, so I hear what you're saying. You're not spiritually connected to it. Because a lot of people are. For some reason, spiritually connected to this thing. I respect their perspective. This ain't the first one. I respect their perspective. You Okay. What, what me? I'm gonna be, and I agree with you. I agree. I respect everybody's perspective, even if I, I you know, even if I don't agree with, it, I at least respect it. Um, I hear a lot of people saying again, uh, spiritual stuff about it, this and that. Um, I did get to see it, so okay. and I didn't know if I was gonna be impressed. Of course, you know they tell you, you don't look. Glasses. Let me tell you what happened. So <laughs> a lot of people say you're not supposed to look at it. Y'all heard that right? You're not supposed to look at it. Hey, can you heard that right? So I was coming out the uh, Home Depot. Everybody outside around 2.15, and they all looking up. So everybody, most people had glasses on. It looked like the movie theater 3D glasses. Mm-hmm. So when I walked past a gentleman, he said, you want to see it? You want to see it? 
I'm like, I'm really trying to squinch my eyes. I knew I ain't supposed to be doing it, but he gave me his glasses. I put them on, and it actually looked kind of dope. Okay. It was okay. dope. Okay. It was dope. Did y'all see it? It was it was it was really dope. I, it's actually you see this the moon. It's the moon coming over the sun, correct? And it was the crescent. It was at the crescent. Okay. And I was like, so for it, it was cool to see that part. But it, I mean, really, I would like to see it being daylight where those people was in Texas. I believe was it Texas? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mexico. It was in Mexico. So it was in Mexico where it was light like this, KD, and it went dark. Like gradually went dark until it got dark. So that's I what see, I want I seen to see. That, that was one of the videos that I did see. Did you? Yeah, I did see a video where, where it was it was light, then got dark, and came back light again. Um, now, I'm lying. If you want to... I didn't see the full eclipse. Okay. But I told you I broke the XRT. So what happened was <laughs> <laughs> when I opened the patio up, I didn't want to... Because it's a big car. So I, I threw it outside. And then my kids was like, Dad, don't look up. Don't look up. So I was like... <laughs> What do you mean? Don't look See, up. kids gonna be on it, right? They gonna be like, yo, don't, don't look up, man. Like, so yo, I did, I did look up. It wasn't done. It wasn't there yet. Right. I did have to go. Oh, then I just went in the house. <laughs> oh my god! So, so and, and, you know, it still kind of looked like this a little bit outside. So yeah. we didn't get the full effect unless True. you had the glasses. Mm -hmm. But again, people in Mexico they got to feel the full effect. I, I, not that I would travel out there for mm -hmm. the next one. The next was every hundred years, so we won't miss that. We missed that one, but that had happened before anyway. But the solar eclipse, I, solar eclipse, I wasn't impressed like that. But I'm sure if I was in Mexico, um, it would be much better. I want to see light and just go dark. That's what I thought. I mean, I, I mean, I did think, think that. that. You know, what I, mean? I, did, I did think that. Wow, I was expecting. Man. I didn't do my bike ride because, in my mind, it's going to get dark. <laughs> <laughs> that oh, was no. Before I forget, man, listen, the hots, man, you're watching the hots with your international news that we talk about, the stuff that you guys talked about on social media and all types of places. Y'all talking about a lot of stuff. But I would be remiss if I don't mention that the hots is brought to you by Blender. Blender Eyewear. Whoa, That's right, whoa, man. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Here you go, KD. I got you. You don't even wear you, Blender Eyewear. You ready? Blender Eyewear. Don't blend in, blend out. And you listen at the word blend because that's our life is about blending, fading, and all oh, that's our life. Don't, don't blend. And they dope. Damn, they dope. Damn. You like, you like silver or gold? I guess, I guess. Yo, KD, they nice. Shout out to Blender. Don't blend in, blend out, man. So, listen, you are tuned in to Cuts Convo on Coffee 47 after the hour. Um, we are on the hots right now. We also got an out of pocket. I got one person out of pocket. We'll get to that. That's just people that went a little left. And we're like, oh, maybe we could pull them back in. <laughs> we're not trying to blast them. We'll get to that. We, we didn't get to that. We got one more. We got one more. Can I do one more hots? Diddy. Diddy's in the news. Like, oh, Diddy's in the news. Um, and, and we, we can't even touch on it if you want to, but, you know, no, Diddy's in the news a lot lately, and it's just so much going on, but I will say this. It's conspiracy to me. It's a lot of stuff for the show, TV, maybe. I don't know, but I will I will say this. Diddy's not locked up, and Diddy doesn't have a mug shot. It's nothing going on, you know what I mean? But it's the world's hype, though. But you been paying attention to what's going on? I'm. I, Did you cut Diddy here? I was given the offer, and I turned it down. Oh yeah, you didn't want to go to the party? You gotta tell him no. It that was Cap. We gonna say. I almost ended up at a party. <laughs> Yo, KD said, "Go ahead, go ahead." No, I almost ended up at a party. Okay. So okay. funny thing is, uh, 2018 uh, All Star Weekend, NBA All Star Weekend is in LA. Um, I'm hanging out with a few NBA athletes and their family. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And um, the statement was, "Hey, we got an invite to Diddy's party." Right. But Floyd Mayweather's doing a party too, and Snoop's DJ. Oh. Wow, where y'all want to go? The yeah. group, the group wanted yeah. to see Snoop DJ, right? Because it wasn't like Snoop DJing. What he? Oh yeah, he does DJing, like kind of like Shaq does, I, right? I didn't know that. Yeah, this is my first time here, so it's like, yeah, where y'all want to go? We gotta go see Snoop. That's what we did. So Cal goes right. You, you got to tell Diddy no, especially <laughs> when Snoop is DJing. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, I, I, I'm not. I'm not. I don't like to use the word fan. Once I found out what the word fan is short for, is it's short for fanatic. You know what I mean? So I don't really concern myself a fan no more because I have to be a fanatic. And that's where the word come from. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I do like Diddy. I always did like Diddy. And the stuff he's done and contribute to um, this uh, world and all that stuff. I'm cool with that. You know what I mean? I like the music. You know, who don't like old bad boy music? You know, I try not to get into all the hoopla stuff. So I have a, a love-hate relationship with my man. I hear this all the time, just so you know. So <laughs> I've worked the Press Play Tour. Okay. And then I also I did a, a, a stint with the... Um, uh, Bad Boy Reunion Tour. Yep. So I literally worked that tour right before I ended up leaving that one to do the uh, tour with Adele. Much better experience. But the first show, funny thing is, I'm cutting Adam's hair. Right. Right. The show is supposed to start at like 7. I'm cutting Adam's hair at 8.30. Right. 
He couldn't even finish getting his hair cut because Diddy wanted to change the run of show. Oh, I heard that can happen. I heard that. Yeah. It was an 89 song set. Adam's oh. job is to make sure that music director each song is selected perfectly and transitions into one another. That's what's rehearsed. Right, exactly. And after the show is supposed to start, you change it. <laughs> Worst show I've ever experienced. Oh. I swear to you. I'm, I'm in the front of house pissed. Wow. Pissed. I'm watching the show and I'm like, I know these musicians and I know what they're capable of. Right. And this is not it. This is not it. No. You don't that was Diddy's it. fault. So yeah, yeah. So I'm not mad at Diddy for what everybody else mad at Diddy right. for. <laughs> I'm mad at Diddy for messing up some of my favorite songs growing and up. You know, I, I try my best, Katie, honestly, to stay stay neutral and stuff like that because I never met Diddy, but I, you know, being in our field, we hear everything, so we kind of hear and know everything and stuff mm -hmm. like that. We keep it to ourselves. Um, but I, I hear a lot of the love hate. That's all I hear, honestly, that type of thing. And also, shout out to Adam Blackstone, man. Who's guy? the top music director probably in the world to me? In the world. In the world. Hands anyway, down. Hands down. Hands um, down. Emmy Award winning. Super Bowl. You know what I mean? Everything. So let me also give you a note, some more flowers. Um, Kenny, you are like the plug of, and we're going to get right back to you. So you're like the plug when it comes down to stuff like that. You know, I cut Adam hair because of you. I think, I don't know, something would happen. You probably was away, you know, trying to make sure he was in the best hands. It, you know what? And you call and say, yo, Adam Black's dude. You know what I mean? And Adam don't, you know, I ain't tell we live it, but you don't live too far, you know what I mean? Um, and I saw, that's how I met Adam through you, you know what I mean? Um, I'm glad I knew you wasn't from Atlanta. Two, I, <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> so the great, and, 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 and you always throw the lobs. I mean, you are you just a, a good quarterback when it comes down to stuff like that, and you do want your people in good hands. So I definitely appreciate you, you know, even doing that because now me and Adam is like real cool. You know, that's my guy. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and I'll go over his house. I just over his house. I think he left his jacket over my house. I had to take him his jacket not too long ago. Um, then he gave us a hat. So shout out to BBE. You know what I mean? Basically black. You know what I mean? So Adam Blackstone again. That, that's from you. Did you see the last, last tiny dust he just was? I did. With see Justin? Him. Yes, I seen it with Justin Ow. Timberlake. It was amazing. Matter of fact, he's in California now um, going over Justin's um, show because he's going to go back on tour. Yep. So yep. he's back doing that. You know what I mean? Um, what is it to, to you? Um, is this something that you decided in your mind, say, you know, I want to be in that arena where I want to be cutting professionals on that level? Are we talking about the Justin Timberlake, the Adam Blackstone? Mm, I mean, I can go down the list. I mean, Michael B. Jordan, you done did Creed. I mean, you you cut, you cut started cutting, like, the truth in them hair. You know what I mean? Yeah. That type of stuff. So, And I've read through all this stuff. So um, did I aim for it? No. Right. It was just something that I believe God had destined for me through the relationships that, we, that he seemed to be divine. Um, right. T-Wise. T-Wise, yes. Um, I cut T-Wise because of you. That's yes. that was the that was the continuing of what already started because I started out as a musician myself throughout grade school. Okay, so it helped me build, build friendships that end up leading to each opportunity, and the basis of it is just me me willing to be an asset to some of the people that I've been connected to, open the door to the next level. So everything you see. When people see the bigger name or the most notable name, I see a less notable name that's associated as a reason why that door is open. Right. So someone else. <coughs> All, so, I'm, I'm, I'm always seeing it from that standpoint. So. so so sum it up for a barber or photographer, makeup artist. Um, Kenny, you do it all. Did I miss anything, Kenny? I know you do a lot. So those slasher. Just sla he's a slasher. <laughs> and we said in the beginning of the show, he's a great slasher. Um, someone that might want to be in that ar arena or on that frequency, you know what I mean? On that. What advice would you give to someone that, no, no, I would like to be in that space, or, or, or be around a cut celebrity hair, and, and that's, what would you, what, any advice could you give to someone? And then I'm asking another question that's kind of like a stupid question, but go ahead. Always find a way to be an asset. Well, uh, Make an assessment of what's missing, and then provide the said thing that's being requested, and add additional value by what's missing. So early mm -hmm. on, I provided haircuts because that's what was, what was requested, but I provided pictures for bios because that was what was missing for them. Great quality images of them looking their best that people can use in said bio. Right. Then from there, it's, okay, how can I be an asset with where I do the haircut? How can I be an asset on anything else that's needed before or after the haircut? Right. Those are the things that literally end up being the, 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 the thicker branches that led to the other things. Right. You know what I mean? Curtis I, Smith, he's the one that told me, he said, hey, listen. Usher. Cut, usher. If you want to be a better mm -hmm. asset to your clients, right. learn how to do male makeup. And that's literally why I changed my name to Gay Duncan Grooming, because grooming actually means light male makeup. Wow. 
So from there, he was like, yo, you do this, you'll be a much better asset to the clients you serve, and you'll be able to unlock a higher earning potential. So you kind of expanded and said, let me just stretch myself out just a little bit more because it's, it's right there. It's uh, right there. And I was telling people. Um, already, we're already doing it, though. Exactly. As barbers are already doing makeup. They're already doing it. We just it. call it enhancements. Exactly. And it's the cheapest makeup you'll ever do. Yeah, but when you hear the word, <laughs> it, you know, it's funny. I'm glad you said it because when you hear the word makeup, then you know how the men get. No, you're already doing it. You're already the doing pencil, it. the touching up, the sprays, and all that stuff. But you know, you all right, can let me break it down. Let me break it down. Please do, Katie, because I want you say, to. Let me say, I've been trying to break it down. I mean, but Un- go ahead. understand this one. Client goes out to a party, uh-huh. has a photo shoot early in the morning. Uh-huh. So oh, you yeah. think it's responsible for making them look like they didn't have a long night? You. They may. They may have had fun with a young lady, and it might got a little aggressive. Who, huh? who got to cover up that scratch? You do. You, you, you got to know how to do it. <laughs> I mean, they may have enjoyed their vices a little bit too much, so they, they, they may not, their eyes may not be as clear. Who's responsible for making them look good for that interview <laughs> that you see on ESPN? Right. <laughs> you are. And you, who's going to be paid a premium just to keep that a secret? <sighs> to, to not tell everything that's being done. I, I, I'm with you, Katie. I, yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. I think you is <laughs> speaking some good gems right there, definitely, because yeah. you you got to do that, and you got to know how to do that, and, and it's more money in that. And you know what? I love what you're talking about, Katie. You're not even really mentioning about money. You're talking about hard work, dedication, uh, the process. We're, the, what you're saying is the money going to come. It's going to come. Don't just he's, he's not saying, hey, man, this, everybody talking about the bag, the bag, the bag. Focus on the bag, the bag, the mm. bag. But he said, no, no, focus on the work, the work, the work, yep. the access, the access, the access, the production, the production, production, and all that stuff will come. Not one time did KD come out and say, man, you just got to make sure you go get the bag. And, nah, nah, you got to put the work in. And that's the only thing that I have with our, um, with our even our industry. You know what I mean? You got to put that work in. Um, Tyreek. The, Tyreek on the school, Tyreek yes. Jackson, right? Yes. You know Tyreek, Tyreek, mm-hmm. of course. You know, Tyreek like, said something um, real important, real profound one time. He said, "We are all part of a billion dollar business. The problem is, is the mindset of the people having caught up to the billion dollar mindset." And I thought that was so important to say that because, man, we got everything in front of us. You know, what I mean, when it comes down to a barber, I can't. I, I started a construction company. You know, what I mean. Five years ago, five years ago, a successful construction company where we do um, commercial and residential properties. I don't, I own the company. I'm not out there hammering no nails. But do you know how that started? It started by me seeing and the, meeting the need for my client. Derek, you know a painter. Kenny knows everybody. Trust when I tell you, he knows a painter. He knows an electrician. He knows a plumber. And people are going to ask you, yo, man, my, what's my, my AC broke. But the whole time, I'm cutting the HVAC person. I'm cutting the painter. I'm cutting the electrician. I'm all, so guess what? I just call them and say, here's the number, and I started connecting them. You're, that's another thing I want to give you flowers for. You're a good connector, and, I, and that's one of your special gifts. You're a great connector, and I have learned to be a good connector. So what I was doing this for free, I call an electrician up, say, my client over here and the electrician. But what happened, I become the middleman. What well, do you know people are getting paid to broker deals? Man. <laughs> do you know I people? <laughs> and then I had to learn the word, oh, I'm subbing people out. So I started subbing out these people, you know what I mean, and add my cut on after a while, because you, you know, that's what, you know, you're being nice. Sometimes you're being nice, say, nah, this is my client putting together. No, it's money involved in this. You know, it takes work, it takes so I, time. I got a story to tell well, you. Go about ahead. That. Okay. So funny. So yeah, and, and it involves Adam too. So I have oh. a client that loves to have, loves live music, right? So different oh, cities shit. we go to, he knows that I'm connected to live musicians. So he will say, <sighs> Hey K, I love this story already. Cause I go ahead. Go hey ahead. K, listen, I, 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 want, I want a piano player, I want a singer. Yes. Tonight. Right. Like, mind you, it'll be six o'clock. He was like, can, can you have somebody here by eight? Keep mind, we'll be in like Denver. Right. Like, I don't know anybody in Denver, right. but I have people who know people in there. And he knows that I can actually produce that one. Right. Right. So, opportunity comes. Cool. I sent up a couple texts, sent out a couple phone calls. Right. They'll be here in an hour. Stuff, stuff happens, right? Right. It's one particular time. I'm calling different people that have come through before in the past. Um, they're not answering. They're not delivering right away. Right. So I call Adam. <gasps> hey, Adam. Da, da, da. Cool. He says, hey, I'm on a flight. I'm going to see what I can do. Two minutes later, I get a text. And he says, me and one of the other people you talk to, we believe this is the best fit. Cool. No problem. <sighs> Already, the historical pattern was my client will make sure that he compensates well. Right. He's never argued about. Payment or anything. Never right. argue, right? It, money's never an issue. I told, I told bro what what their normal rate was. He was like, 
gosh, bet. <laughs> right? Cool. Bet. Right, right. I'm not asking for anything off the top. Right. Like never have I never have I done this. Same thing I was doing. <laughs> that was actually I just connecting everybody. I'm connecting, connecting the whole world, getting all kinds of jobs done. You know. So I talk to the people that's on the doing the event. They come through, everything's great, they loving it. Next thing you know, the client shares them on social media. Right. They loving it. They feel like they even got more out of it than what they should have, right? Right. So the next day, I connect the people who actually did the event with the assistant so they can get paid. Boom. They get paid. They're loving it. Right. After that, I hear from Adam. He's like, hey, who should I send an invoice to? I'm like, oh, we didn't have this conversation oh. thoroughly. Oh. I'm like, they're paid already. He's right. like, what do you mean? I was supposed to handle that one. Whew. And I already knew exactly who this, the yeah, connection. The connection. And I said, well, my like, I was working for an hour. You was working for two minutes. Uh, <laughs> you done learned the yeah, game. Yeah, look, look. So when ahead, he told KD. me the rate, which go I'm ahead. not going to mention. Yo, 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 he told me the rate. He's like, yeah, I would have did this. I'm like. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but let me tell you something. <laughs> That's how the game go. You know, and, you know what? And shout out to Adam again because he's a good connector. Mm -hmm. Like, he's kind of like what you are in barbering and all the stuff you do. He actually got a whole look, send the bass player, send the keyboard yep. player. Yep. He is the yep. man with BBE. Like, yep. man. And that's yep. what he does. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, again, we're behind a chair and we have all these things that are access accessible to us that we don't utilize. You know what I mean? For extra money. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, we love cutting hair behind the chair, but you don't want to spend all those hours stand up like we used to do when we were young. You know, I, we would stand up, man, cutting hair. Kenny, I'm sure you don't cut many of his like three and two and three in the morning. I've done that. Those days are done. They're done. They're but here's, right here's, exactly. here's, what I, here's what I will say. Um, I don't desire to stop solely because of the relationships I have access to and the conversation I get to have. Yesterday, um, I was working with the Sixers to do the coaches. I thought I was just starting with coaches, but right. things changed. Honestly speaking, I still haven't even sent the invoice yet because the money isn't as important to me as right. what the experience was. All day yesterday, I had nothing but great conversations with great minds. Wow. That literally, I feel like I got paid with insights on stuff more than anything else. Everybody left with, man, thank you. And we were, no, yes. thank you. Yes. Just going back and forth. When it gets to the point of the, the people you're serving, you you don't have that anymore. Right. That's when it's like, uh, I need to choose something different. Yes. But that that's literally what it comes down to. Burnout usually happens. My first two years of cutting, I experienced burnout. But it Whoa. wasn't wow. I was gonna be done. Tell me I was what that, walk away from real quick, tell me what that what that feels like. So I wanna know if I ever hit it and just kind of just like subconscious avoided it or what I felt happened. like I was doing it for the money and not for the love. I felt Ooh. like I was doing it for Ooh. I gave myself access and I not, I gave myself access to people that wasn't benefiting my life. Okay. Uh, I feel like I was being, I was thrown, uh, I was being thrown everybody else's issues. And at the time, I wasn't equipped to be able to be an asset to them. So we're both just leaving frustrated, but I'm leaving financially stable because of the financial exchange. Yes. But the spiritual and emotional and very important. Exchange, that wasn't there. So I was like, Ooh. I'm feeling drained at the end of the day. Okay, like, so you know I understand what? that. I, I, I don't know if I want to do this one. I understand. That's when I started photography. Wow. Because it's going to have to be some other exchange within this one that's going to help me. It's going to keep me connected to it. And that's when I started creating the barbershop posters and the need to do the barbershop posters where my uncle was a photographer and it was frustrating trying to get makeup artist, photographer, yes. model, barber you all even, together you to even help do that one. You even helped me with that. Um, I, to show you a testament of how far we go back, I remember when you started doing photography, right? Because mm -hmm. I was writing plays at the time. I had a, mm -hmm. my first play with him on a cornbread, yep. and Yo. it probably had 11, 1,200 people, <laughs> like 11 or 1,200 people that came out to see this play. 1,200. Killed the show. Yo. My photographer was no, no other than KD. My first photographer I ever had. <laughs> he done all my pictures. And I say, you know, I about, forgot. And, he, and everything he's saying is true because it's not about money to him. No, no. I just want to make sure it looks right and it's professional. We had a professional band, the set, everything. And the show mm -hmm. was a hit. You know what I mean? We ended up taking it down south and everything. KD was my first uh, photographer, photographer for that. And um, again, thank you again. And um, you didn't charge me a dime. You just said, no, we're going to do what we do. And let's, let's make it. It was a team <laughs> thing. You're very, you know, a good team player. Um, I want to ask you a quick question because you were saying that about, you know, spiritually, you want to make sure that's being fulfilled 
even if you were behind the chair. That's so important the conversation. If anything that I miss, and not saying I would never go back to cut, I still cut a little bit on the side, you know that, secretly, you know, of certain mm -hmm. people. Um, but uh, I miss the people. I miss the conversations. I miss those connections. I don't want to feel like now I got all the connections, and you know what I mean? But it's still certain things that I need to... Um, to, to have, and it's just a relationship, I'm a social person, so I to have that. The reason why I done Cuts Convo Coffee because I'm bringing the barbershop outside the shop and so we have these great conversations because you know as well as I do, they're a great conversation. My question to you is, what do you think the barbershop is missing? Even salons, what, what, what are they missing? Is there anything that we're missing now or maybe something that we had that we don't have no more? Is there anything? I said to somebody yesterday that um, I don't read books, I listen to books. Good. And... When I find the time, is to um, whenever I have a client that I know that doesn't want to talk, I listen to a book. Good. Why are you cutting? Why well, I'm cutting? Okay. So I ask people two questions, two open-ended questions at the beginning of the service. Okay. And open-ended questions are any form of questions that can't be answered yes or no. Right. I pay attention to how many words you share afterwards. If you give me a one-word answer to the first question, it means you don't want to talk. Oh, and if I follow up with another question that's open ended, and you answer with a one or two word answer, then you really don't want to talk. Cool, I can listen to my book. Right, I got you. You're not here for the social experience. You're here just for the cut. Wow, cool, no wow. problem. Um, I the thing that I I'm not gonna say I would. I'm gonna say is but missing. you gave them the opportunity. What yeah. I like about that, we got you. That's very. Gotcha. I, I like because you may yeah, not yeah. be here for the cut. You may be here for the conversation. Correct. Correct. So. It's not to say I would say it was missing. I just or, wish it was more of. I was wish it was more of an appreciation for listening to books while working because there's okay. times where I tried to put the book throughout the shop, right, and people just start talking as if the book isn't going on. I got you. so I, I I'm not gonna say it's missing, but I will say I wish something that's desire is the desire to continue to receive information that's going to be beneficial that will help you grow help grow that mindset now do you are you able because you may or may not or may, do, are you able to cut new clients are you able to take on clients at all or you say nah i got it where it's set because you can easily say it's set it's locked so done. new to me means new through relationship so oh um okay okay there were people that i cut new that were yesterday because of them being new to the team to be a new coach right so i was hired by the sixers and then the Sixers said, these are the people who are going to be a part of the picture that we need to have. So now, from that now, standpoint. Katie, if you need me, you know, you can't, if you can't be there, you know, I can shoot up to Philly. I ain't doing that, Katie. I'm retired. Say no more. You know? to, to know, to, <laughs> listen, listen, you don't understand. Right. To know that you are willing to be able to move like that. You know that. You just jumped higher on the list. Wow. Because that's necessary. Right. What Let's am I doing? It. So hear me out. Good, good. My conversation today was, I, I, I turned down cutting somebody to be here today. Wow. And there's a singing group that I cut named Wanmore. Oh, I love them. Oh, the young boys. Oh, boys, man, Wanye, all his sons. And they all named Wanye. How do you, but you got to go by their nicknames. Did y'all know that? Yeah. They all named Wanye. All four yep. of them. Like, yep. I saw yep. that you cut them on a video set one time. Yeah. Just recently, matter of fact. Yeah. They're doing good. They're doing great. They're on um somebody's label. I want to say Mary J. Rock. Yep. Okay, there yep. we go. Yeah, shout out yep. to Wamo. Wamo. Yep. Yeah, get them on the show. I would love yep. to get them early. Get them now. Yep. Get them now. I got to get them now. <laughs> but go ahead. We'll talk about them. Yep. On the ride down, going through my Rolodex to see who was to be available to be able to cut them. Right. How did you, did you, did you, was you successful? I was. Good. Good. I was. But what I'm saying is, now that I know that you have Clippers available. You know me. And there's an opportunity. There you go. I'm on my this. way. You're on my way. You, 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 all, you do it all the time. Yeah, all, I mean, all the that's time. all I know you about, connecting and putting the right people in the right position. Mm -hmm. and, and like you said, it's, it gives them an opportunity to even go higher. Mm -hmm. So relationships is very important. It's always been important. Wow, man. The book that I'm writing now is, is called Quality Relationships Are Worth More Than Money. You should see it by August. Oh, my gosh, man. Wow, wow. Well, listen, man, it's uh, top of the hour right now. We still got a couple more minutes left, man. We got a couple more sections that, session, segments. I said session, segments. Segments that we got to go through. And one of our uh, segments I just want to touch on real quick. Katie, you can chime in if you want to. You know what I mean? But it's for the people that goes a little bit left. We got to pull in. I might have seen it on social media. I might have seen it on TV. I might have heard about it. But it's something that, you know what? You're a little bit out of pocket. So ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Out of Pocket. Yeah. What's up, hair can, hair amazing? We good? We good? All right, so listen, 
Um, out of pocket again is just for people that went a little left, man. And I want to make sure that we kind of give them some help to guide them back. I'm going to mention the name. I don't know if you're a fan. Of course, you already know how I feel about fans. But Candace Owens is on the hot, on, on out of pocket today. Tell me why. Do you know? <laughs> so, are you a fan of Candace, Candace Owens? So, Let's open I've, it up with I've that, cons- KD. I've consumed some content. I don't know enough to say that I'm a fan or not. I've okay. Seen, I, I've I've heard her say some things that I didn't agree with. Right. And I heard her say some things that I did agree with. Right. So I'm neutral. Okay. I, I like but, that. But I'm also ignorant to current Why current, she's out of pocket. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to tell you why she's out of pocket. <laughs> and it's something that you're probably going to have to agree with. You know what I mean? Um, Again, again our, our purpose is not to blast nobody, but it's just stuff that we may have seen that's kind of questionable. Um, Candace was on the, uh, the uh, Breakfast Club recently. Hmm. I'm like you. I actually like Candace. I do. And every now and then she'll say some stuff that's a little, oh, you know what I mean? And if it wasn't for the pause generation, everybody got to say pause, I would, pause. Let me, I could just say pause first. I would, I know how to treat me and spit the bones out. Pause. You know what I mean? I, 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 Kenny, I hate it. Kenny, I hate it. I hate that. You know what I mean? I'm a cool, hey, stop, don't do that. Don't, can, can. So I don't know if you know the gong. You, you, you don't hear the gong, but yeah. But anyway, um, she was on The Breakfast Club and had a great interview and, Candace is the type of person, you ever like somebody and say, yeah, but I'm just not all the way locked in with them. And I don't know what it is. At the end of the day, um, Jess Hilarious, who actually, shout out to Jess Hilarious, who's actually a, um, the new person on Breakfast Club. Okay. She asked Candace a question. Clever. When I say cl- comedians are clever, and just so you know, comedians is, is comedian. being a comedian is on my bucket list too. Um, because comedians are clever. They're super smart. Mm-hmm. They had a third eye. They see things like we don't oh, see. Yeah. So during the whole conversation, you got DJ Envy and Charlemagne. They interview him. Good interview. Some stuff we agree, sometimes. But it's Candace. You know what I mean? And I like Candace. Again, at the end of the interview, Jess Hilaire said, hey, Candace, God is good. Now, in our community, Kenny, God is all, good. All the time. That's my, that's my boy. That's my boy right here. That's my brother. You hear me? So she what said, she say, she bro? said, <laughs> Candace said, what did she say, man? She said, God is good. She said, no, Candace, God is good. And she said, amen. <laughs> I said, whoa. And, and, uh, and yo, the, you got to watch it because Charlemagne is, you know, he got the little <laughs> words. He said, he said, come on, Candace. Oh, God. You know, and then she said, Charlemagne. Ah. She said, Charlemagne, just like I just did you, KD. He said, um, Charlemagne, God is good. He said, all the time. And then he said, all the time, God, God is, is good. good. <laughs> come on, boy. If you don't know that. If you don't know that, uh, Candace, we got to bring you to the carpet. We got to talk to you because you're coming off as you're a sister trying to help the sisters. But I'm thinking that you just might not be a sister. And I see that because every sister and every brother know that God is good. All, all the time. time. You know what I mean? Um, I know, and she could not answer that. Oh, man. And let me tell you something. I feel that I can speak on other races' affairs. Like, I can't check other races and say, y'all need to be doing this more. You know, I just feel I can't do that. Maybe technically I can say what I want, but mm-hmm. I'm not going to speak on saying, man, y'all need to start having your kids in the laundry mat with this, you know, how they say they have the um, dresses on about other races. I just don't feel like I, I I can comment on stuff like that. And guess what? I feel the same with other races being able to comment on us. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And Candace, you are starting to come off as if you're just got the face, but the inside, you a whole Becky girl. And that's the problem. I didn't figure it out until I saw that Jess Hilarious is a genius. She is a genius. I didn't oh, I didn't man. realize it. I always like Candace. And you know what? I used to get backlash. Oh, man, you like her, man. She Trump this and all that. You know, she ain't she against us. And I was like, no, she's an intelligent black woman. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And she's just speaking on us. No, she ain't. No, she ain't. So when she couldn't answer that, oh, she not. She so, just look black. So I- I, I, on the well, serious, go ahead, on the serious go ahead, though, right? Go ahead, Katie. Uh, I don't like to talk about people. I like to talk about me and my family, so I like to make it personal, right? Come on, come on. So I'm just busting my son's balls about how uh, my son Chris busting his how balls. How old is Chris? 14. Okay. And that's when the cut. Yep. yep okay, good. Yep. So Shout busting, out to Chris. Yep. <laughs> Chris Duncan. <laughs> his, his, old, his old nickname was Clipper Over Chris. Because I do the clipper over cones. It's so creative. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, KD Collection Cones is, is right now. Where you get them at, KD, real quick? Listen, Listen, we're in 200 stores across America. 200 stores across America. And, you know, I love this stuff. Go ahead. So, Chris. So, Chris Chris is wearing hoodies with shorts. Hoodies with shorts. Keep, keep them up. All right. I mean, I mean it'll be I'm 40 cool. degrees. 
their kids don't even wear coats, Kenny. So I'm not surprised with hoodies with shorts. With shorts. So right. for me, I said, hey, here's what I, I, I'm suffering from. Uh-huh. I moved to a predominantly Caucasian neighborhood, uh-huh. and I'm seeing the the assimilation of my kids <laughs> into the culture <sighs> of the neighborhood. This right. Is, this is what's taking place. My kids are assimilated. So when you're sitting there talking about Candace, I'm thinking about my son. <laughs> because he's been affected. He's been affected I'm some like, kind of bro, way. Bro, like we don't wear shorts oh, in this morning. My God. <laughs> like, <laughs> we, we don't do that. He's like, what, they, do, you, what they, do you mean? They don't even wear coats <laughs> nowadays. Like, what in the world, man? Oh, man. So, so you think he picked that up from just being where oh, he's I at, know, by, know, by I surrounding? Ain't no, I think. I know. I know. So, I know. So one of the things I would say is, this is with all of us. Yep. Whatever we're around most is going to dictate how we think. Yes. You picked it up. Right. You picked it up where she ain't. Right, <laughs> and it, I think, and I think it affected her so much. So now, now I'm digging. Now I see her saying that. So I started paying attention to other stuff. Then I started paying attention to our hairstyle. Ah, oh, that's not our sister's hairstyle, <laughs> girl. You got it cut. <laughs> Come on, yo. She and ain't I got started, no protective style. She don't have that, and I know she doesn't go to her sister salon. She she doesn't have a sister doing her hair. She's going straight to Sally's or whatever, you know, whatever. And no disrespect to any business, you know what I mean. But I started digging, KD. I said it was always something that I did. I felt that I couldn't be locked all the way in with Candace Owens, and I'd have found it out. She's a girl that's just pretending to be a sister. You're really not a sister. And for that reason, Candace, you're out of pocket. <laughs> Yo, Ham Ken, listen, man, it's 15 after the hour. We got a couple of minutes left, man. We got one more second segment. As y'all know, I hope y'all enjoying the show. I'm with my man, the slasher himself, Kenny KD Duncan, man. Kenny, you just told us that this is in every store. What? I, you got combs. You got, what else you got? You got so much stuff going on. So when it comes to the, to the beauty side, um, I have nine versions of the. And, and you got the best combs, just so you know. Appreciate that. Because it, you, you, it wasn't a person that created a comb that didn't cut hair or knowing about, you know, people can create par- products and you don't even cut hair. Mm-hmm. You, are, you was a professional barber that knew what barbers needed. Yep. And, and it says that in your product because mm-hmm. the, even if the, the uh, wider comb that, you know, for the blending, in, I knew that it only it takes a barber to do that. It takes a barber to know yep. that. So because I became a fan of cutting with my combs versus attachment combs, Right. The combs became important to me, and then the color became important to me as well. So there was no carbon fiber comb with any light color. Ooh. So we had to mix carbon fiber and rubber mix to get it to be a light color, but had the strength that's going to last in the barber side. Unbelievable. The tension of the teeth that are very sensitive to the teeth differs, differs and for I different people. I see that people. one's missing. The people like to get broke. It's not broke. No, it's that's a parting tooth that actually makes it's a parting tooth. Part tooth. Oh, so depending on what texture show, of hair, show half can half a minute zoom in on that right quick. Boom, boom, boom. There you go. There, there it is. All right, there you go. <laughs> so depending on what you're going to be doing and the texture of hair and the density of hair that you're going to cut, there's different, various different tensions of the teeth that right. we have for that. So we have nine different versions. Uh, I have razors. Um, and for the I professional mean, barbers, you know that's that's your guard. If you we don't use it when you you get to a level of professional barber guards is kind of like irrelevant. We really don't use too many guards at all. If, if you use them, definitely. that that becomes your come on, man, me and Kitty, come on, yeah. definitely. So come on, Kitty. Okay. So I want I want to I want to uh, give you some uh, early access right to something right now that's going on. Um, don't tell me that. 20, 20 years of being an educator with Andis will be in February of twenty twenty five. Really. Yep. Congratulations. Yep. Appreciate that. Appreciate and that. And you're still with Andis right now. Still with Andis. Yep. Wow, man. I was supposed to be fired in 2005. Well, I guess I'm going to throw my other no, question away. I'm going to throw my other stupid question away. I'm going to say, Kenny, what's your favorite pair of clippers? Try again. <laughs> but let's say, not brand wise, what's your favorite pair to use? You know what I mean? So, As our, your main clipper. So, right now, my favorite pair is the prototype that I'm using right now that the public will see oh, okay. in 2025. Y'all hear that? Kenny got clippers that y'all ain't even y'all ain't even using yet. So the re- the reason why is because I've been given the opportunity for me to cultivate it from from the beginning to be what I want to actually have it as my own clipper that will be released. Wow! At the Bronner Show oh. where it started in 2025, and I uh, I can't wait for you guys to be able to I'm see. I'm going it. to be there. So. Now, out of all the hair shows, and there's a lot of hair shows that goes on, even in court, you got uh, Barbara up Connecticut, right, and all that. What hair show will you would say, if you're a barber, stylist, whatever, or even, even in photography, you can't miss this show? What right. show would say, yo, and you can, some shows, you can go to all of them, of course, but you can't miss this show. Try not to miss this one. Which one would you do? Could you do that? 
Tell us which one. So right now, for, if you're a barber and you just want to focus on marketing and branding, I'm going to say you can't miss a CT Barber Expo. Okay. CT. That, um, that's coming up. If yeah, yeah, it's in May. Oh, you be there? It's in May. I, will, I definitely will be there. Okay, go. Awesome. awesome. But if you're if you're a barber who who seasoned and the only thing you lack is a special skill set that you want to have equipped, mm. the show that I would suggest you go to is the Premier Orlando show. It has the most amount of classes on things that you cannot get at home. I so saw it's that. gonna equip you the most. And when that's is that? Really. And when is that's that? in June. So that's come to Orlando show. Yep. I'm gonna go to that one. Yeah. My yeah. daughter's living in Orlando, yeah. so I get there. That's gonna so be right that there. show. And I wouldn't even talk about just show just going to the show floor. My suggestion would be to look through the list of classes and spend a day going to different classes that you know is gonna equip you with the things that you struggle with. Wow. Leave away from that one be a beast wow man so i'll be down there definitely and um probably not on the barber type platform but i probably go ahead and bring cups combo and coffee down there all day and do a couple of interviews or something all like day. that and just you know hang with them you all know what day. i mean plus you're gonna be down you're there gonna too, find so some be, stuff out of oh that's you know, gonna be dope man um one more question and then um we got another little quick little segment and we out of here um do you ever think about opening up a school or teaching on that level that so I, I had a season of working at a school for the purpose of getting certain things under my belt to prepare me for when that happens. My business partner has worked, he runs the uh, barber academy at my barbershop now. So we have the foundation there for it. I just don't have the time just yet because of how much I still move around. Uh -huh. The next chapter of Kenny Duncan, when he desires just to not travel anymore, will be involved with the school. So Crystal. it's in the future. But it's not my now. Awesome, man. Awesome. Listen, man, it is actually 20 after an hour right now, man. Give it up for my man, KD, Kenny Duncan. Kenny, I got one more segment to go. It's a real easy segment. And this segment is called Ask D. Reed. Send me questions and stuff like that. And DM me like D, this, that, and the third. Um, far as the hair business, someone say, hey, D. Reed, I just want to ask a quick question. What is the state of the hair industry now, and where do you see it going? That's cool. Thank you. Um, I'm going to say, oh, DA. Initials DA. But yeah. Perfect. Uh, where okay. I see it now is I see it as a, seeing at the tip of the turn of incorporating more AI. Oh. The tip of the turn. So right now, some people are incorporating it. Um, I think it's going to, there's going to be a lot of things that we can't imagine take place and become normal within five years. Really? Because of. Yeah, because of the simulation of AI on so many other things. We see it now. And we're using it a little bit now. We're using it a little, a little bit, bit now. now, yeah. But, but do you think robots are going to be cutting hair and stuff like that? Because people, when you say stuff like that, be like picturing robots behind a chair. And we had that on a uh, show before. Somebody talked about that. Do it's I never going to happen. Do it's I believe never. that it can happen? Yes. Um, do I yeah. believe it's going to be good? And I, do I believe it's going to be uh, making us obsolete? No. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Now, now people, some jobs people, are going to be said, obsolete people because said that People said that $10 haircuts performed by other cultures were going to kill our culture. It mm -hmm. hasn't. Had to happen. People said that the big chains that have the cheap haircuts that are done really fast were going to affect our business. It right. hasn't. It hasn't. There's always going to be somebody that wants to consume something of higher quality, and there's always going to be somebody who wants things on a budget. Yes. You know what I mean? McDonald's yeah. has never affected Ruth Chris. Right, exactly. <laughs> it's a culture. Once the culture is established, and it's actually a good culture, because overall, it's a good culture. It's a staple in our community, yeah. the, the, the the country club. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's a service that one thing about us, we're gonna support. We're gonna yeah. look good. We're gonna have our hair. And your hair's gonna keep growing. So, um, and uh, but, okay. so, the, you mentioned the country club piece. Yes, that's the number one reason why I haven't stopped. Oh, then see, I understand that. So Marcus Harvey, that. Marcus Harvey said that. Um, in order to be successful, you have to have what's called a success cluster. Right. Barbering has equipped us with a success cluster. Yes. Some of us know how to use that cluster. Yes. Some of us don't. That cluster is different people that's necessary in order for you to go to the next level because of what area of weakness you have that needs to have strengthened in order for that business to take off. Oh, yeah, that's good stuff. Good stuff. Mark is out of Atlanta, too, right? Yes, sir. And he got a nice shop down there, too, with the art. Beautiful. Oh, I'm going to go down there. I'm going to take it out. Shout yeah. out to Marcus, man. Good, good stuff, man. We got one more thing we got to talk about. Um, what the show about? Huh? What the show is about? Which one? That we're awake. The what one? That we're awake. The we're awake? Yeah, what the show is about. What, that fact that we woke? Oh, I didn't even tell you all that. 
Goodness gracious, I got to touch that, right? Oh, man, well, if you watch the Cuts Cut on Coffee, you know that we're not, we're woke, but we're not asleep. You know what I mean? Of course, I, you know what, half can you right. I got also mention um, Abundance Child, and Abundance Child's in the building. Abundance Child, Heal Thyself Tea, has been, this has been brought to you by them, who actually got some good tea. I thank you so much, because um, a lot of people need that stuff when it comes down to nutrients and all that stuff, and we were just talking about that today. So, Abundance Child Tea, Abundance Child, listen, Heal Thyself Tea. Hey, man, thank you so much. And the reason why we call it Cuts Cut on Coffee, Kenny, I don't even know if you even knew this, but the reason why we call it Cuts Convo Coffee because me and you come from that barber world, that that barber world, and then you got Cuts Convo. Convo is the great conversation that we have inside the barber shop that we got to keep going. You know what I mean? And the reason why we call it coffee because we are woke. A lot of people proclaim to be woke, but they blind as a mother. And guess what? We are woke and we ain't blind. So Cuts Convo and Coffee. I want to make sure that I send that and make sure I send our sponsors. You know, y'all props and I appreciate you guys. You know what I mean? So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, Kenny Duncan. My God, Kenny. My goodness, Kenny. I feel like we got to do a part two or something. <laughs> it's like a wealth of knowledge, a wealth of relationship, man. And I just want to thank you so much for being on the show and, and all the insights you can give us, your journey. Um, but, Kenny, let me ask you one quick question, personal question. Do you drink at all? Yes. Okay, we're good. <laughs> so I want to present you with this. The Ace of Spades. Hey, close my ace. You know what I mean? I'm going to put you with the ace of spades. You know what I mean? Don't stop there. And I, we have an ace of spades right there. You see that in the back? But I want to make sure you get the real one. You know what I mean? And that's you to give you your flowers and say we appreciate, appreciate you. It. And all you have contributed to our industry and other industries for being a connector, but being a, a philanthropist, or being a pioneer like Kenny. You you know, you're the man. You're the connector, man. So I appreciate it. So even with that, I'm going to give you this too, man. Oh, we got gifts on top of Cuts this. Cuts on coffee t-shirt. You. Cuts Convo and coffee. You know what I mean? Sweat, sweat hood. You know what I mean? And, uh, you don't have to open this, but it's Cuts Convo and coffee. That's what you can <laughs> You don't have to open that now. But let me tell you, you're going to appreciate it. Let me tell you, it's funny. Not only are you going to see this on me, but you're going to see this on Chris. He's at a point now where he's in my closet. Bro. Oh, my God. I was getting I dressed this morning. Feeling. I was like, I want to wear something, but I don't see it. Next thing you know, he coming downstairs. Yo, bro. Yo, how do, you, <laughs> how do you deal with that, man? When you got a son. Now, how many sons you got? Three. Three sons. Little, little, I, little, I told you, I remember you had boys. Little, right? So I told, I, told, I told him this morning, I said, when are you going to start buying some throw stuff so I can wear stuff from your closet? Oh, my God. <laughs> Now, what size did he wear? What size did he wear? He wear large? large. Oh, yeah. you, you're in trouble. <laughs> you never wear that. You'll never see the light of day. Matter of fact, you know, as a matter of fact, I got to make sure it was Sixers colors, too, because I know you up there a lot and all that stuff. I'm at the Sixers game, matter of fact, Sunday, because it's Allen Iverson's um, day or something like that, this Sunday. So today, so, yeah. they're actually unveiling the, uh, the trophy. I mean, not the trophy, the statue at the practice facility. Really? So, yeah. Well, so what's the uh, which statue? A A I has a statue at the practice facility now. There's a room. oh oh yeah. shout out to A I. Yeah, it's being done today, and there's a party being thrown tonight. And <laughs> Ace of Spades is actually one of the sponsors. Get out of well, here for A I's unreal unreal. Well, unreal you, unreal you, unreal you unreal got joke? your gold bottle. I got my gold bottle. Yeah, my God, <laughs> man. Thank you so much, Katie. No, I really you. appreciate you, man, for Likewise. taking time out. I know you're busy. I know you're handling a lot of stuff, man. But I appreciate that. But I'll be at the game on Sunday too. So you know what I mean. No and if you need me, you know you always can hit me, man. Oh, my guy, man. Listen, man. Give it up for my man one more time. KD. Hey, KD, you want to give up a shout out or you want to tell anybody where you at or, you know what I mean, what you got going on for us upcoming or anything or your emails or whatever you want to send them? So, I mean, every, if you wanted to tap in with me, we already said it was Kate Duncan Grooming. Uh, and yep. That's, it's, a, it's a wealth of information that you can be connected with on KennyDuncan.com. So tap in, stay yes, connected. Sir. Let's go up. That's what's up, man. And it's your boy, Top Shelf D. Reed, man. Bam. You hit me on um, Facebook, Derek D. Reed. You hit me at DerekDReed.com. Or hit me on Instagram at Top Shelf D. Reed, man. You can get me, man. Y'all know we all accessible. You know what I mean? We ain't that far. We can't reach us. I'll be touched. You know, they call me Top Shelf, so you can got to reach for me. But anyway. <laughs> but I want to thank you guys for watching the show. Half can, half amazing. I think we did it, man. I think we pulled it off, man. It's only one thing to do. Close out. Most people say when things get right, I'll make a move. But the reality is, things get right when you make a move. It's your boy Top Shelf D. Reed, man. Thank you for watching. Another episode of Cuss Convo Coffee. See y'all later. See y'all next time. My God. I love you, boy. Yeah, boy. Yeah. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's the boy Top Shelf D. Reed. Thank you for watching this show, man. Hope you guys enjoy it. See y'all next time on Cuss Convo and Coffee.